this show is about what's driving people. Now, you know, you've done this for 25 years, and, and still you, you just go and do it every day, and you put your heart and soul in it. What was driving you to to do that? As a person uh, grows older or matures, perhaps, uh, I, I think things shift a little bit. And, and in the beginning, the, the desire was, uh, uh, since I was just completely average in my life, in everything I pursued in, in high school and, and in college, uh, y- y- you, you want to distinguish yourself and you want to have some way to show people that, you know, I, I, can, I can be more than just an average. Uh, and so uh, the idea, I always thought that I could somehow, uh, you know, make people laugh. So that was the big uh, driving force in the beginning. It did, I can do this. I can, I can, here, look at me, I can do this. Uh, and then when you finally get a little traction in that regard, uh, things change. And, and I, I, I found that within the last, I don't know, five years maybe, I, my, my real kind of ongoing uh, pursuit is to try and be a better human being. Uh, I, I feel like if I drop dead tomorrow, I, I kind of have accomplished what it was I wanted to do professionally. Uh, and, and now, with that perspective, I, I notice that I need some work in other areas. So I, I you know, I just turned 60, and and uh, there are other responsibilities incumbent upon humans than having a TV show and, and you know being able to talk to actresses every night. So you you, you kind of start thinking about that, and and I think the the best place you can begin is well, yeah, I, I can be a better person. I you know I I never really worked on that, so it's uh you know I I can't pretend that. I, I, I'm, I'm haunted by this, but I'm reminded about it from time but, to time. But you, you, you're, you're able to combine the two, though, because you still do a great show. I mean, I guess, I guess uh, in racing too, when you're really going after something, you devote so much time to it. It's, uh, yeah. It was when I drove uh, professionally. It was like, you know, there was no room for anything else. Right. I, I had to do this, that's and, right. and, and and that's also the reason why I retired because. Uh, I had another little person in my life at that point, and I right. just came to the conclusion: okay, to do this to be successful, I can't really right. look after the other part. But you've somehow managed to still go in yeah, your profession. Yeah, but it's, it's different. I I, uh, I I think to the exclusion of many other aspects of my life, I pursued television uh, for a long, long time, and then I, I finally realized there's there's no point. I'm here. You know, what what am I going to do if I if I go off the air tomorrow? I've still done exactly what I want to do and that's that's when I realized yeah there's time for a family now there, there's time for other activities and there, there's time to try and uh, identify really what is important beyond just being on television and and believe me most of everything else is more important than being on television has, has David been uh, instrumental in creating this uh, sandwich nah I just made it up for him Ah, okej. Okay. Okej, okay, det är dags att gå. Jag får ta med en jacka ner för det blir lite kallt där nere. Hey Paul, how are you doing? Everything good? Good to see you. How are you? Everything good? Hi there. You're not going to put a jacket on? Are you used to this? Are you used to this weather? What we did before, when is that going to happen? That's when he's walking up to the desk after his monologue. Um, uh, that's the that's the shuffle in G. The, yeah, the ten years after yeah. the shuffle. That's when he walks to the desk. Okay. After the monologue. <laughs> Yeah.
Now, you've been doing this for, for a long time, and um, you're very well known everywhere, and uh, how, do you, how do you deal with that? You well, you, I, I remember the, uh, when I moved to Los Angeles, I was 27 years old, and within a couple of years I was on The Tonight Show, and when, when people started to recognize me, uh, suddenly uh, everybody became very nice to me, and I thought, wow, th this, is, this is the best thing ever. You know, no, no more fist fights, uh, no more, no, I'm sorry, we can't cash your check, no, I'm sorry, we can't change a 20, you know, get out of here. None of that. Everybody became pleasant and accommodating, and I, and I really uh, have grown to love that throughout through my life. And, and, and uh, I, I know it's wrong, you know, I know there's no reason for it, but I really, really, you know, I, I love it. It's very nice. What made you so successful? I mean, you, you, you came from... Indiana, and and now you're uh, one of the United States' most uh, known persons. Uh, you, you've 25 years. If, that, in, if that's in, true, in, would I be sitting on the roof talking to you? <laughs> you, you have a point there. Yes, exactly. Now, now <laughs> I, I just I don't know how to explain it except I was lucky, and it and it's not hard work. Uh, it was never hard work, uh, and I, I, I you know I think about this all the time. Uh, I, I guess the the toughest part of it for me was to make the decision to leave Indianapolis because I was fine, I was happy, it's where I grew up, I, I love the city, uh, I had all my friends there and so for me the, the most difficult aspect of the whole thing was to make the decision and actually pack up and, and move to Los Angeles uh, and that was the hardest thing. A after that everything was, it, it's always been fun, you know, it's always been fun. Do you think that you've uh, had to give something up to, to, to make the career that yeah, you... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I had my son when I was, I think, 55 years old, uh, 50, 56 years old, and uh, I, you know, strategically avoided a family when I was, you know, starting my career. I just, like we talked earlier, I just didn't feel there was room for it. And, and I think maybe that's a regret. I don't have, I don't think I have many, maybe I'm too dumb to have regrets, but I think that's a regret. I kind of wish now that I had been smarter about that. You know, there 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 could have been room for everything, but I'm uh, I couldn't be happier that I have him now. But I think that it's. I felt when I raced too. Uh, that the, the the kids thing was a decision that always got sort of yeah. pushed yeah. pushed, and and, yeah. and I never lived that's that right. down because Anita is always reminding me, and and you know uh, that you know. But but it didn't feel right. Right to. I know. You, 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 I know, but does in hindsight does does that feeling justify not doing it? it? Because I look at my and I had the same feeling. I said, no, 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 I'm not ready, not ready, not ready, and I kind of kept pushing this back for 15 years. But now looking back on it, that was probably false. You know, that that instinct was probably not true. It well, was, nobody it was, can tell though. No, nobody can tell. Know. But I, it's interesting from this perspective. I wonder if an instinct that I felt so strongly was in fact valid, and I think probably not. But what are you going to do? I'm, I'm, then again, the other way to look at it, if, if uh, it wouldn't have been who I have now, you know, and I, I'm so in love with the kid I have now that... Uh, <laughs> it's an amazing thing. It's it? crazy. And the, the, the other thing is, uh, they won't know, your daughter, my son, really won't know uh, how much we love them and how we love them until they have their own kids. You know, you can tell them all you want, but they'll never know. They'll, they'll, they'll maybe feel it in certain tangible ways, but they won't know until they have their own kids.